Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin and today I am fresh faced because I am doing a skincare video. You guys have been asking me to go over my skincare routine and so I pulled all my products out and I'll tell you how I take care of my skin or at least try to. Um, a little bit of background about me, I am 39 years old, I'll be 40 in the fall. I do live in a very hot and humid climate and I have oily skin. So um, also I am prone to hormonal acne. I do have eczema flare-ups and so I have a lot of different stuff going on with my skin. I did turn my lights down quite a bit so that you guys could see my pigmentation and kind of see what my skin actually looks like. I have already put on my morning skincare just because I cannot go with my face feeling dry, but let me go ahead. I have all the products in front of me, so we're going to go over daytime and nighttime, and I'm going to show you guys how I have been taking care of my skin. I guess I can start with this and take a drink, but one way to take care of your skin is drink water. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a nice long sip of this, and then we're gonna get into my products. Maybe just a little tip for getting your water intake. Also, I'll post a picture on the screen of it, but I have a gallon size like spigot container jug in my refrigerator that always has cold water in it and I do put some like sugar-free like flavoring packets in the water ahead of time so that I'm not having to remix some sort of water every single time I want to refill my cup. I can just go to my little spigot thing and fill up my cup. I do go through a gallon of water probably every day and a half. So I'm not quite getting a gallon a day, but I try to stay hydrated because my skin is oily but dehydrated and I know like you can't you can't drink your skin to hydration like so that is why I use a lot of hydrating products. But let's start with first thing in the morning whenever I wake up, I do wash my face. I use a lot of oils and kind of occlusive things at night. And so if I left all of that quote unquote residue on my face, then I would be even more oily during the day. So what I do is I use my Innisfree green tea amino acid face cleanser. This is wonderful. It does not strip my skin. It foams up really nicely. So I really love this. I've gone through three, four, five of these. And so I am very, very much in love with this product and love it. You only need the smallest amount of this. So this thing lasts forever. But I do wash my face. Another tip slash trick is that I bought a pack of eight washcloths that I just use for my face. So I take out a new washcloth every morning and that is what I pat dry my face with. I don't go in with my towel. I don't go in like, and I don't like water on my face so I do dry my face. I know some people don't dry their face whenever they wash it but I have to. I hate like my face feeling overly wet. Just a a thing for me. But I do use a new washcloth every single day just so I'm not putting extra bacteria back onto my clean skin. So after I wash my face, I come into my beauty room and sit down. I do keep a lot of my skincare in my beauty fridge. A lot of times that is so that light is not getting to it um, and so that the actives maybe stay a little bit longer or the active stay fresher a little bit longer. So I do go in to this first little container that is in my skincare fridge and I spray on the Tower 28 SOS Save Our Skin Daily Rescue Facial Spray. I bought the big refill bottle of this during Black Friday last year so I've refilled this a couple times and this is also approved by the Eczema Association. So I do have an eczema flare up right now on this part of my hand, which is so weird, but I've been using my prescription on it, but to try to keep kind of eczema and also like it helps with my redness. I get extremely red on my chest and on my face, and I'm actually dealing with some chest acne right now too, but I, 
I've, I've gone to my doctor. They say it's not autoimmune. They, the only thing they can do is prescribe something that like constricts my blood vessels so that I don't flush. And I was like, I don't want to take a medicine. I'll just be red. But I do feel like this does help kind of calm down some of that redness, at least on the surface level. So I love this. I feel like I'm all over the place with this. I'm sorry. My brother-in-law is showing up for a visit tomorrow and he's coming a day early. So I'm trying to film this while also like the laundry's running, the dishes are running, the Roomba is running in the other room. So my brain is other places. But I feel like with my skincare routine, I've been able to cut down on blackheads and whiteheads. I've, I still get the hormonal acne, which is more cystic underneath the skin. But as far as those like whitehead and blackheads that just kind of pop up. I feel like I've been able to cut those out a lot. And again, I think that this really does help with the whiteheads um, as far as also kind of like calming down the skin if it is irritated or if my um, skin barrier is broken down. So after I spray the spray, I do use eye cream after that because I want to put the eye cream on not... Like I don't want the eye cream to be fighting through my other products to get to my skin. So I've been rotating between two of them. So the first one is the Kiehl's Creamy Eye Treatment with Avocado. I did buy this when it was 50% off and I actually put it in an airless pump. So this is a really large eye cream. So I didn't want to be constantly opening this and di dipping my finger into it. So I did decant that into this airless pump. It also allows me to get just the right amount out of it and so that is a lot of eye cream. So I'm still going through this one and there was a dog hair just flying around. But the other one that I'm using is the Good Molecules Yerba Mate Wake Up Eye Gel. And I like this also. I actually put this on my under eyes today. I don't really see any eye creams doing anything for my dark circles. But as far as keeping my under eyes moisturized, that is more what I'm going for. Because while I do have oily eyelids and also I have oily skin, my under eyes can look really dry when I'm putting products on. So I try to put a lot of moisture into those. And definitely there is a huge difference in price between these two. And so, like I said, I got this 50% off and that is probably the only way that I would buy this again is if I got it 50% off. But this one, which is like $7, works just as well, in my opinion, as far as moisturizing the under eye. So enjoying my eye creams. The next thing that I go in with is going to be some sort of toner and I actually have in an emulsion right now but I go in with something extremely hydrating and thin so I like to build up thin layers of moisture I cannot cake on a thick heavy moisturizing cream my my skin will not absorb that that'll just make my oils that'll make me look it'll break down everything so my philosophy is thin layers of hydrating products. So I love Innisfree. I love their green tea line. And usually I get the toner, but I couldn't find it. And I found two of these at TJ Maxx. So I picked up the emulsions. They're almost kind of like the milky toner that's really popular right now. That's kind of, sorry, I have dog hair that just sticks to my, my dewy, shiny face. But this is wonderful and beautiful and again it is a thin moisturizing product that i can just put on and as of note i do not use cotton pads for any of this stuff so i spray this on or i'll spray it into my hands so i can really pat it in and not lose a whole bunch of product when it is kind of like floating in the air and then i use the emulsion i pat that on with my hands and then the next product that i go in with is kind of like my active serum and Jane is on the move. But this is another Innisfree product. This is their green tea hyaluronic acid serum. But what I actually do with this is I took a bottle of this and then I took a bottle of the Glow Recipe Plum Plump Hyaluronic Acid Serum. I took this. I took a whole bottle of the Ordinary Caffeine Solution 5% and I took a whole bottle of the Ordinary Niacinamide 10%. I took all four of these, which these are my new ones because this one is 
almost out. There is just a little bit of product there in the bottom. So I took all of these products and mixed them together in a clean, sanitized mixing cup. So I did that, and then I added the Good Molecules Vitamin C Booster Powder. So I will say this, I am not a cosmetic chemist. I am just a consumer. I mix my actives and my products together and I have not had a reaction to them. I've not seen anything go off or be bad about them. So I am choosing to mix all of my actives together ahead of time and store them where they're not getting a whole lot of light and where they are more climate controlled. So I am deciding to do that. You guys decide what's best for you. This is just what I've been doing for the past three, four years and it's worked for me. So this is a powder vitamin C. And so instead of having to open this every single day, dump the little scoop in my hand and then add all the serums and mix them together, I just mix them together ahead of time. I don't have time to be playing chemist in the mornings. So I mix all of those products together and I dump them into, it usually fills up two of these bottles. And so once I've gone through those two bottles, then I know all of my products are gone, which this will be an empty for um, June. But that is how I get all of my actives. I like the caffeine solution. They, they kind of tout this as like an under eye serum. But hey, if I can wake up my skin with a little bit of caffeine all over, I'm okay with that too. Niacinamide is also good for the redness and also for like the, the whiteheads and the bumps. And then vitamin C is just overall good for your skin tone. And it also works really well to help kind of quote unquote boost your SPF. Um, and again, I'm talking out of my behind with all of this. This is what I've learned over years of watching different people on YouTube talk about skincare and people that I trust that talk about skincare. So this is how I do my actives all at once. So that is what's mixed into this one. And like I said, in about a couple days, I'm going to have to make a new concoction and mix up the rest of these into my daytime serum. But let's see, what do I end up doing next? We do moisturizer next. So my day-to-day -day moisturizer is going to be the Elf Holy Hydration Daily Moisturizer. I picked up a bunch of these during Black Friday. And so I just keep these in my skincare fridge and I use about four pumps of this and I do take my moisturizer all over my face, around my ears, down my neck, onto my chest, and then around the back of my neck. Like, I think that we ignore a lot of different pieces of our skin. And so I take four or five pumps of this and I slather it everywhere. So that is how I go in with my moisturizer. On days where my skin is feeling extra sensitive, like maybe my barrier has been kind of disrupted, I do go in with the Dr. Jart Ceramidin Skin Barrier Moisturizing Cream. I have a big one and then I have a little one that I keep in, in my bathroom for nighttime. So if at night my skin feels like it needs an extra oomph, then I can put that on. But this actually, it's really moisturizing, but it's kind of matte. And so it doesn't make my oils come out. It doesn't interfere with my makeup. It is a beautiful moisturizer. It's expensive. I got this 50% off during the Sephora sale last year. And so I would not purchase it full price, but I would purchase it for 50% off again. It is a beautiful, beautiful moisturizer. So then my last step in the morning is going to be SPF. I just used up, which you'll see in my buys and buys, which will be the next video that's posted. I did use up my Laneige SPF 50 SPF. Feel redundant at that point. But I did just use that one up, and so I have moved back, and that one has been discontinued, so I can't get that one anymore. I did love that SPF, but I can't get it anymore. So what I've moved back over to is kind of my holy grail um, SPF, and it is from Polish Choice. And this is the Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense SPF 30. And so this is for normal to oily to combination skin. So kind of everybody except for dry. Um, it does have, it says shake well because it has a little bit of a tint to it. Let me put a little on my finger. It does have a little bit of a tint. And I don't know if that is to combat like white cast or whatnot, but 
It does have a little bit of a white cast, but on me, of course, I am pale and fair. So on me, it does sink in really, really well. And of course, I slathered my face with it this morning. And you guys can see I don't have any sort of white cast. It all has sunk into my skin. So this is my final step. If I could recommend any like one or two things to somebody with oily skin is wash your face in the morning with something that's gentle, but that will kind of like get the sebum from the night out of your skin. Um, thin layers of moisturizing products and SPF. Um, I think it was maybe seven, eight years ago when I actually started wearing SPF daily and I've lived in Florida my entire life. So I would put SPF on if I knew I was gonna be out in the sun for a long time, if we were going to an amusement park or if we were going out to the beach or if I was doing yard work, I'd put SPF on. But for my day to day, I did not wear SPF until about seven, eight years ago. So I'm very fortunate that my skin is not that damaged because I am a homebody, I'm not a beach person. So like I stayed out of the sun unless I was intentionally doing an activity in the sun and then I would slather on like SPF 70 <laughs> from the grocery store type of thing. So it wasn't until I started to get it more into makeup, I started to get into the beauty community that I realized, hey, you gotta wear SPF every day. And so again, with the SPF, I do my whole face. I take it on my ears, around the back of my ears, down the back of my neck, down all of this, and then I use a body SPF for kind of everything else. Because I... This is not necessarily super pricey, but I don't want to be slathering this on my whole body when I can use something from Walmart or the grocery store to SPF the rest of my body. Um, so the other thing that I really like doing is, I know a lot of people say that you can tell your age by the back of your hands. And again, like I never wore SPF on my hands and you know, doing a lot of driving, there's a lot of sun in Florida, you can't escape it. So I think my hands have done relatively well. Um, for being 39 year old hands, but anytime that I'm doing my skincare, I'm just taking the extra and I'm rubbing it into my hands. So don't waste your products if they're already on your hands. Rub them into your arms, rub them into your chest, just use all the product that you still have on your hands. That's also why I don't use cotton rounds because I don't want to throw the product away when I can rub it on other parts of my body. So. That is everything that goes into my daytime skincare. After I'm at this stage, typically in the morning, I'll do all of my skincare and then I'll go make my cup of coffee. And so like while my coffee is brewing, while I'm making my cup of coffee, everything is sinking in ready for my makeup for the day. So this is typically, like I'm still a little bit greasy. Like I'm still, there's some moisture in my skin, but... This is how I want my skin to start out whenever I'm doing my makeup. I do not want my skin to start out matte and tight because, again, dehydrated skin, if my skin feels more dehydrated, it's going to produce more oils. And so the whole myth about you have to have you have to dry your skin out to prevent oiliness is wrong. So for me, definitely, I need all of these thin layers. I need this layer of moisture and kind of this layer of the, the thicker products like this and the moisturizer. I need that to lock all that hydration in so that my skin doesn't freak out and produce a lot of oils because it's like, oh my God, you're dry. Let's produce a lot of oils. So that is what I do for my daytime skincare. I will very, very shortly touch on the hormonal acne. So I have some spots that are healing over here. I think I have maybe a spot or two over here that's healing. Right now my skin has been relatively good and I'm looking at my monitor over here if I'm trying to see what my skin looks like. But I am also in the process with my doctor of maybe diagnosing PCOS. Um, so I do have, you know, the darker hairs that come in along my chin, along my upper lip. I do, which let me grab it real quick. I use either a little like tinkle razor um, to kind of clean up my eyebrows, clean up here. I use this on my upper lip. And then I also did for Christmas, I ended up getting one of the leaf um, like derma planers and I got a little case for it because I didn't like it just sitting out. So this is a derma, derma planer that you can use to also like shave off your peach fuzz, but it removes the top layer of your skin, like the dead skin as well. It helps, it's an exfoliating tool. So I did get this for Christmas and I do use it 
it maybe once a month. I don't want to overdo it. And also like my peach fuzz grows back so quickly that it's just pretty much like every two or three days I have to take care of the little hairs that come on my chin. So, um, I mean, we're humans, we're mammals, we grow hair, so it is what it is. But on the other side of it, you know, I am not comfortable with sporting a little bit of a beard, and so I do end up shaving my face, plucking the hairs. Um, I've considered getting one of like the you like lights to start doing some hair removal. Um, also, it doesn't help that I am uh, my my heritage goes back to Eastern European, and so we are just hairy people. Um, so I do like trim down and shave my arms and all that stuff. So we are just a hairy group of people, but that's how I also take care of kind of, uh, the cell turnover, getting off some of those dead skin cells, and then also taking care of those pesky hairs that pop up because I am 39 years old and my body is revolting against me. <laughs> so let me clean all this up, get my huge basket of nighttime skincare, and we'll go over that. All right, now we are on to nighttime skincare. So of course, the use of these products will depend on like how my skin is doing, am I wearing makeup that day, all of that. So let's start with, of course, the first thing that I'm going to do is cleanse my skin. And I do a double cleanse. So I have a few cleansing, like first step cleansing items here. First, I have the Anoa heart leaf pore control cleansing oil. I did pick this up recently in a yes sale order and I stuck this in my shower to use and I'm already down to here. I can use maybe like two pumps of this and it actually emulsifies really, really beautifully. The only thing I don't like about this is the scent and it does have, I have a dog hair. Y'all just don't even know. <laughs> Maybe if you have a bunch of hairy dogs, then you do know, but goodness gracious. Um, with this one, the scent, it's very spa-like, but I don't really care for a spa-like smell. So it works really good. I haven't had any more issues with it kind of like burning or stinging my eyes. It doesn't leave that like cloudy feeling on my eyes either. So this is really, really nice. I just, I, if you guys have any recommendations for like a K or J beauty, um, cleansing oil that is fragrance free, please let me know. Which, tangent, I have fallen in love with K dramas. And this is the only reason that Netflix is getting my money right now, is because they have all of those Korean dramas, and I am sucked in. Like, being 39 years old and like being obsessed with K dramas and realizing that like K pop stars are the actors in K dramas, so now I'm discovering K pop, that was not on my bingo card for 39 years old. But I am all about it. And my poor little dyslexic brain, I am reading subtitles because a lot of these shows are not dubbed. And if they are dubbed, sometimes they're dubbed poorly. And so I have been reading subtitles, which bless it, I was chatting with Andy the other day and I was like, hey girl, I'm really sorry, but I can't chat because I'm watching a K-drama and I have to read the captions. So I can't multitask anymore. So K-dramas have actually allowed me to slow down and like not play on my phone and like look at Instagram and listen to a show at the same time. So hey, I, my, my husband said I might need an intervention, but I am loving me some K-dramas. So if you guys have some more Korean or Japanese beauty items recommendations, make sure to drop them down below and let me know. Um, the other cleansing oil that I have is from Fourth Ray, which is ColourPop's sister brand, and this is the BFD cleansing oil. This is beautiful. This is a holy grail. I love it. It does not really have a scent. Not that I've noticed. It does have a scent, but it's not offensive. Like, it's it's fresh, a fresh scent, but it this scent bothers me more than this scent. But I do repurchase this quite a bit. Obviously, it is a much smaller bottle, but I use about two pumps of this to cleanse my face and it gets everything off. So I love the fourth ray. And then my holy grail cleansing balm is the Clinique Take the Day Off Balm. I did pick this up at a Marshalls last year, and that is how far down I am. I don't dig out of this. I actually have some small 
smaller travel size containers of the Clinique. And after they're empty, I basically refill those little sizes and keep the little sizes by my tub and by my shower in my shower so that I'm not dipping my wet hands into this all the time. I'm just dipping my wet hands into a smaller jar. So love my first cleanses like that is next level. And if I have been like, if I have sunscreened up and like working outside that day, I also use an oil cleanser to get all the dirt and all the, uh, like the old sunscreen and all the oils from the day. I use those to get everything out of my pores and off my skin. And then my nighttime cleanser is real easy. It is from Walmart. It is the Equate Walmart brand. So this is the foaming facial cleanser for normal to oily skin. And this is compared to the CeraVe foaming facial cleanser. So this is the generic of the CeraVe foaming facial cleanser. Tongue, tongue twister. Um, but I have been buying these forever and I go through maybe like two or three of these a year. They're only about $5 and they work great to get my makeup off at the end of the day. So nothing really special about that one, but definitely love that. Now, if I ever have any pesky you know, eyeliners or mascaras, then I do go in with a micellar water. This is an old, I just, I like the, the top of it because with my micellar waters, I do use my Shiseido cotton rounds or I use like the washable cotton rounds. And so I like this top where you can just push down on it and the product comes up. Um, but what's in here is the Garnier regular micellar water. So I buy, because this is the... I forget, because it's not Biosance, but it's another Bioderma. This was a Bioderma, and Bioderma is a lot more expensive than Garnier, and I use micellar water so infrequently that I don't need to buy the more expensive one. I just use the container that it came in. So that is my micellar water. And then let's go into, because after I cleanse, then I look at my treatments. And so my holy grail, the thing that I use all the time, is the Paula's Choice, the Skin Perfecting 2% BHA Liquid Exfoliant. So again, I have oily skin, and so this has been able to kind of clear out my pores from the sebum and everything else that's kind of gathering in there. So this has helped with the blackheads and the whiteheads and kind of keeping them at bay. This is a salicylic acid based product. It's a BHA. So that is what it's used for. So I love this. And again, I just dump this straight into my hand. I don't use a cotton pad. I pat it all into my face. I take it down my neck and onto my chest because again, I do get some chest acne. And so I take it all the way down my chest. Most of these products I do try to take all the way down my chest if I can. Like sidebar to that is the one mask that I have and this is from Caudalie. This is so old. I need to maybe try to put this into a project and use it up but this is so old but it still works. It's what it's a pink clay mask but it is their instant detox mask and this if I feel like I have I usually get congestion around my chin on the sides of my nose or I'll get congestion down here in my pores. If I feel like my pores are congested, I slap this stuff on and it works miracles. So I love this stuff. It is, it's pricey. And that's why I don't, I mean, but with the red, I used to have to use this a whole lot more. This is the second one that I've purchased of this. I had to use this a whole lot more when I first started getting into skincare because my skin was so congested. But I feel like with everything that I've learned about my skin and about what works for my skin, I don't have to use that a whole lot because my skin does not get congested all the time. So it's taken me quite a bit to try to get through this other one, but I do love that mask. My other actives that I am using is going to be, or are going to be, these three things. So I do have the different gel. So this is the retinol alternative that my dermatologist recommend that I start with. I might, when I go back to her this year, I might try to get on an actual retinol because with the acne kind of feeling under control a little bit and me knowing that it's just hormonal, I want to get with her about start treating my, my fine lines. So I'm very expressive. My face is very expressive. I smile a lot, which is a great 
problem to have. So I do have quite a bit of fine lines around my eyes and then also right above my eyebrows because my eyebrows are very expressive. <laughs> so, you know, if I was ever to do any sort of like injectables or like Botox, I would probably have them kind of do something with the lines here, my, my 11s here, and then maybe a little bit here. So me doing injectables is still not off the table. Um, if I did anything with filler, um, I do have scars um, around my lips from having my lips pierced whenever I was younger. I have two scars that stack in the middle and I have one scar on the side. So the, and I have, I actually have over here, I have a pore that like apparently was a big pimple way back in the day. So that pore has stayed open um, and like makeup collects in it and you can actually see it whenever I have my makeup done if you are seeing me in person or I can see it in my five times magnified mirror but my dermatologist kind of told me that cutting those out and kind of restitching causes more scars so pretty much putting filler in where those scars are and bringing the skin back to the surface that is the best way to tackle scars like that so it's not off the table for me to ever do that but right now it is not in the budget and I'm not that concerned about it but if I ever have money to burn and I feel like getting some injectables I'm not against it so this is not me preaching for or against it is your body your skin your money so you guys do what you want to do but I am using the different gel. I did already buy my next tube because I'm kind of getting down on this one. And I'm not using this as much as I probably should. And I think it's because I don't feel like I need it as much as before. And again, my, my skin goes in waves and then I, I get my hormonal acne and then it tortures me for like a week and then it scars. And then it takes like three weeks for the scars to go away or the, like the, the red spots and everything. It takes three weeks for those to go away. And then it starts all over again. So I feel like I never get a break from having spots. But definitely, I'm... I'm okay with buying this over the counter, even though part of me too is if I got a prescription, the prescription would be cheaper than me buying this over the counter. So that's the other part of it. Um, here's the word I can't pronounce, but the alizaic acid. So this is the 15%. So this is a prescription grade. Um, whenever I have really, really stubborn spots and I want to dry them out, I will kind of use this as a spot treatment. So have I opened this? Yes, I have. Cause I did use up my other one and then I decluttered my one from the ordinary cause I think it broke me out. But this stuff works miracles. If I have a really, really stubborn spot, I go ahead and I just kind of like cake some of it on, let it dry. If you think about how we used to use toothpaste to dry out pimples, I'm that old that we use toothpaste, but that is how I kind of use this here. And then my last kind of treatment thing is from Paula's Choice and this is a like 10 minute wash off exfoliant. So this is 25% AHA plus 2% BHA exfoliating peel. So like I said, you, you kind of slather this on, wait 10 minutes and wash it off and it kind of lifts off that top layer of skin. Now with all of these things, that's where you have to be like, okay, after you use, you use this, your skin's going to be sensitive. So don't dermaplane, don't put on retinol, don't go out in direct sunlight. Like you have to know all these things about these, these actives before you start to use them. Same thing about using retinol and like going and getting your eyebrows waxed. You know, they kind of say don't use retinol X amount of days. I'm not an esthetician, so I don't know how many days you're supposed to wait. But you're supposed to wait a certain amount of days to go get your eyebrows waxed because your top skin layer is so compromised by turning over from the actives that if you rip it off with the wax you can damage your skin so like do all your research know what's best for you and know when you need to stay out of direct sunlight like you don't use these things during the day like these are things that you need to know about the skincare if, if you're trying to get into more actives so do your research please please please
So after I put on my actives, then I go into my moisturizers. And I have a couple different ones that I use for a couple different reasons. I did touch on the Dr. Jart Ceramiding Cream. This is my little baby one that I keep in my bathroom to be able to use that one. This is something new to me. It came in a FabFitFun, but this is the Tula Skin Care 24-7 Moisture Intense Ultra Hydrating Day and Night Cream. I could not use this during the day. This thing is so thick so, so, so thick <laughs> that I basically slather this on at night if I really want a deep hydration overnight. Um, and so that is what that looks like. I don't know if the lights will wash it out or not, but it is a thick Dairy Queen <laughs> swirl type of cream. So I am using this one. I would not repurchase this, especially for the price, but I was happy to get it in a FabFitFun. Now, let's talk about my normal night cream. So what I ended up doing is this is the Equate. So this is the Walmart brand again. So the Equate Beauty Moisturizing Cream with ceramides and hyaluronic acid. So this is the generic for the CeraVe moisturizing cream that comes in the big tub. So what I end up doing is I take this big old tub of moisturizer and my husband and I both use the same one but we take this big old tub of moisturizer I mix in a bottle of the ordinary hyaluronic acid 2% so I mix in more hyaluronic acid and then I also mix in a good helping of aquaphor so I did have my little tube of aquaphor with my daytime that I keep over here but this is my big tub that I keep in my bathroom so it is just a huge tub of aquaphor. This is my new one because I did mix the other remaining parts of my aquaphor into this. So I kind of am putting hyaluronic acid plus the occlusives plus this barrier into my nighttime moisturizer and I stick, stuck it, sticked it. And I stuck it into an airless pump. So this is one of the ones where you push the top and the product comes out. I, my husband has one of these. I have one of these. And I just refill them with out of this big tub. And that is how we have our nighttime moisturizer. Now, if I am feeling extra dry and extra irritated, then on top of all of that, I will slug with Aquaphor. I will just slather, which... Having hairy dogs and doing slugging is a nightmare because <laughs> you end up with just everything sticking to your face and there's nothing you can do. You wake up with just dog hair all up in your face. But if I'm not slugging with the Aquaphor, then I am going in with one of my face oils. So typically my holy grails are from Ordinary just because they're really good oils and they're a really good price. I'm not trying to break the bank. Oh, let me backtrack from my oils. I have one more moisturizer that I want to talk about, and that is the Vanny Cream. So I did pick this up from Amazon. This is the Vanny Cream Moisturizing Lotion for Sensitive Skin. And I picked up the big tub, and this is not, this is a little bit thicker than the day cream one that I went through. So the day cream I would actually wear during the day. This one I would not wear during the day. This is just for at nighttime. But again, if my skin is sensitive, if I'm feeling like my skin is a little bit irritated, I slather my face in this stuff. And again, it, it's wonderful for healing the skin. I would almost say that this is kind of comparable to the ceramiding cream for, from Dr. Jart. I, this one keeps me a little bit more matte, so this one's great for during the day, but at nighttime, I will slather myself in Vanny Cream. So thank you to Emily Noel, who sung the praises of Vanny Cream and got me to purchase some products from them. But Love that one as well. So back to my oils. So I kind of switch between two different ones from The Ordinary. So I use, this one right here is the um, Cold Pressed Rose Hip Seed Oil. And then I also really like the Marula Oil from um, The Ordinary. So I switch back and forth between the two. I'm all the way down to here on this oil here. So I'm definitely going to have to repurchase another oil shortly. But even with these... <sighs> I probably over apply my nighttime skincare, but I would rather slather myself and let my skin absorb and drink in as much as it wants and then wash the rest off in the morning. I would rather do that than not put enough on my face and my face feel tight and like 
possibly end up with more issues with acne. So I do slather. So I take a full dropper of oil. Whenever I'm putting oils on, I take a full dropper of oil, rub it between my hands, and I press it in. I press it in all over, neck, back, chest, everything. I slather. <laughs> so my other oil that I'm working through right now, this also came in a FabFitFun. It's from Ola Hendrickson, and this is the Ultra Brightening Nourishing Face Oil. And I am all the way down to there, but I've been tracking my use on this as well. It has one of the like push top dropper bottles. And I also use like a full dropper full of this one as well. So I want to slather my face in moisture and slather my face in good stuff before I go to bed. But after that, um, I do, which I didn't grab them, and actually one of them is um, waiting to be washed. It's in my Delicates bag. But I also, I sleep with a satin pillowcase, which I'm saving up to buy a silk pillowcase, or maybe I'll ask for one for my birthday for my husband. Um, satin is good. So it's like, it's a step above having a cotton pillowcase, but satin still can hold some bacteria, and it can break down and snag. And like, yeah, so I really want to get a silk pillowcase. I sleep with a king size, size pillow, so of course I have to get the king size silk pillowcase, which is over $100, so I am waiting on that for a little while, but I do want to get a silk pillowcase, um, and then I also do wear a bonnet at night, and so the I've been wearing a bonnet for a couple years, mainly because my hair was breaking so much, and I hate when my hair is like around my neck at night because it gets too hot. And because I do put so much moisture on my skin, my hair would like stick to my face and it's just, it felt suffocating. So I always slept with my hair up in a bun. Well, the issue with that is that you end up with more breakage from having your hair up like that. So I started sleeping with a bonnet years ago and so I basically tuck all my hair, like no hair ties, no nothing. I tuck all my hair up into my bonnet and I sleep with my bonnet. So it keeps my hair and the oils and the dirt from my hair because I only wash my hair once or twice a week. So it keeps the dirt and oils from my hair from also getting on my face and causing more issues with acne. It keeps my hair off my back because I have issues with back acne if my hair or my hair products are on my back too much. Um, I am thinking about getting the big tub of the glycolic acid toner from The Ordinary because I've heard people say that it works wonders if you wipe your back down with that from keeping your back acne at bay. But with just how hot and humid and sweaty and just nasty you can get in Florida, you have to take care of your skin. So even the stuff that's kind of healing on my chest, this is hormonal as well. These pop up from stress and from hormones, and so I have to take care of the skin on my chest as well. I also have KP, so I take care of the skin on my arms. So I've learned so much about my body and so much about my skin over the last seven, eight years, and I've truly learned how to take care of my skin. I wish I would have known this even back in high school, but a lot of us were washing, we were using Seabreeze astringent, and we were washing our face with the um, apricot scrub from St. Ives. So we were torturing our skin whenever I was in high school, and we were wondering why our skin was breaking out, and the, the barrier was damaged, and we weren't wearing sunscreen. So while I don't think that any child needs Drunk Elephant, my lord, I can't even afford Drunk Elephant. What are parents buying their kids Drunk Elephant for? But I, I, will, I will not go down that road. To each your own. You have your own money. But if you want a, an affordable way, I feel like this is affordable. Let me actually look at my spreadsheet so far. So far, th so far this year, I've only spent $157 on skincare. And let me look last year. What was my overall? Last year, I spent $500 on skincare. So I feel like there's a way to get good products and decent products at, I don't want to say affordable, because still $500 a year is a lot of money. But there is a way to build a decent drugstore priced skincare routine. Plus, I'm always trying to get these things on sale. 
So if you like Paula's Choice, sign up for their emails because their stuff is always on sale on their website. Do not buy it from Sephora because it's never on sale in Sephora. So like there's ways to get these things. Um, I think at Ulta now you can use coupons on the Ordinary, which Ordinary used to be excluded from a lot of the sales. So I always buy my ordinary items and use the drugstore coupons from Ulta. So like there's ways to do this on a budget. So definitely kind of learn as much as you can about your skin. This is just what has worked for me. You guys are always complimenting my skin whenever I do my get ready with me's. And as much as I love it, I still feel a lot of self-conscious feelings on the inside about my skin and so this kind of routine has helped me feel a little bit better like quite frankly I don't care what people think about me so I go out without makeup all the time I don't care like but I do feel a little bit self-conscious when I have a lot of acne on my chest when I have pimples po poking out the back of my shirt like I know when we were growing up, again, here's some psychobabble, but when we were growing up, having a lot of acne was associated with being dirty. And I know that that, of course, is not the case. I know now, especially with what's going on with my hormones, what goes on with my hormonal acne, with getting tested for P PCOS, like these are some things that like your body is just off balance inside and there's nothing you can do about it without doctor's intervention like we know that now you can't just wash your face and get rid of acne you can't but there's still this like trauma <laughs> from childhood about having acne and just you know people thinking that you're dirty or you're you're not clean or you know it, it just it associates so much with things in childhood and kids can be so mean about things that, you know, it just, it gets to you. So even with my skin looking like this at 39 years old, and I'm, I'm relatively okay with it, um, still when I'm 39 and I have pimples and I have spots all over and even with makeup on, you can see like raised spots or dry spots, like it still makes me feel self-conscious. So like, again, I could care less. I, I give no Fs <laughs> what other people think about me, but it's still the voice inside my own head, which we all work on and we all approach ourselves with compassion. So this is my skincare routine. These are the products that I use. This is how I try to get things on sale. This is how I try to find affordable ways to get my products and get really good actives on my face. So if you guys have any recommendations, any suggestions, I would love to hear them. I love our conversations down in the description. Why do I always say down in the description box? my brain, which oh, if anybody else out there is suffering with PCOS right now, like tell me about the brain fog and the fatigue. And just over the last six months to a year, I'm misplacing words. My brain is not computing things and the dyslexia doesn't help, but my brain is not okay. And I hope that you guys are like patient with me while I'm trying to figure out. I just had labs and I have a follow up with my doctor in two weeks. So like, I hope that you guys like are patient while I'm trying to work this out because the fatigue, the tiredness, the moodiness, the brain fog, the like just me feeling like an idiot, it is real. <laughs> so I hope that you guys are patient and loving and give me some grace. I appreciate it. But if anybody else out there is dealing with PCOS, kind of give me some, some encouragement because like, I want to know if it, that's it so that we can treat it. But also I'm just like, Oh God, I don't, I don't want to be in this uphill battle. My body is fighting against me right now. But Tangent on tangent, but I appreciate each and every one of you. I'm going to encourage you to do all the things. Hit a thumbs up on this video. Make sure to subscribe to stick around for Project Panning, Conscious Consumerism, Psycho Babbles, Puppy Dogs, Makeup, Eyeshadow, all that jazz. Make sure to stick around for that. Drop me that comment down below. Let me know how you guys are doing. I love our conversations. You guys are an amazing community, and I love interacting with you guys every single day. But 
I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get back to cleaning because I have so much to do today before my brother-in-law gets here tomorrow and I still need to film my buys and buys before he gets here also. So let me get to that. But otherwise, I appreciate each and every one of you. I hope you guys have a beautiful day and I'll catch you in my next one.